Do you remember when we acted out the implementing Don't Ask, Don't Tell comic book? A website called Comics with Problems uh, posted online an army comic book from 2001 about how to deal with gay people in the military. We acted it out. Ma'am, I've been talking to Chaplain Ayers over the past few weeks, and I think that I may be homosexual. Stop right there. Stop right there. Uh, Comics with Problems, the website that published that Don't Ask, Don't Tell bizarro comic, also published another amazing comic from 1960 or 1961. It was a comic that was commissioned by George Wallace. George Wallace, the famous segregationist who four times was the governor of the great state of Alabama. I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. 1960, George Wallace's campaign commissioned this comic book to get people to vote for George Wallace by showing how brave he was in standing up against civil rights. You can see it here in these comic imagined headlines. Wallace fights back. I won't yield to threats. Wallace stands up for South. Judge won't surrender. The comic book isn't actually an argument in favor of segregation. It's a, more of a conspiratorial screed about how everyone's out to get Alabama. How Alabama, white Alabama, George Wallace, is just defending themselves. It says, why did Washington go out of its way to try to hurt George Wallace? They wanted to ruin him politically. They know he's a strong segregationist, and he'd throw a monkey wrench into their plans to take over the state. Look at this panel, where Wallace pledges that he'll provide Alabama with more blacktop roads, pensions for old people, education, and he says he'll head right back north every freedom rider, sit-in, and every other troublemaker backed by the NAACP that meddles in our affairs. That's the promise, to remove the threat, the outsider threat to white people and a white way of life. The threat posed by the NAACP, by the people who want to take over. Be afraid, white people. There's a threat to take you over. The black people are coming for you. The NAACP is coming for you. They're coming for you. They're coming for you. They're coming for you. And you better band together to not surrender, to fight back. It's pretty raw in 1960 comic book form, right? Well, here's what it looked like in 1990. Uh, it's the same thing, this time in the form of a campaign ad on television. You needed that job, and you were the best qualified. But they had to give it to a minority because of a racial quota. Is that really fair? Harvey Gantt says it is. Gantt supports Ted Kennedy's racial quota law that makes the color of your skin more important than your qualifications. You'll vote on this issue next Tuesday. For racial quotas, Harvey Gantt. Against racial quotas, Jesse Helms. The balled up white fists, the anger at what's being given to black people because it's being taken away from white people. It's a zero sum. Black people are coming for you. They're coming for your job. They're coming to get you. You better band together to not surrender, to fight back against the black people who are coming for you. After the political success in the South of, pol uh, South of politicians like George Wallace, who again, remember, was elected four times as Alabama governor. After the political success of politicians like Lester Maddox, who used as his political symbol when he ran for governor in Georgia, the pickaxe handle he brandished to defend his segregated restaurant from black people. At and after the civil rights era, the political strategy of terrifying white people about the threat posed by black people, black people coming to get them, coming to take what's rightfully theirs, that strategy got a new name, the Southern Strategy. In 1970, Republican political strategist Kevin Phillips explained to the New York Times, quote, from now on, the Republicans are never going to get more than 10 to 20 percent of the Negro vote, and they don't need any more than that. But Republicans would be short-sighted if they weakened enforcement of the Voting Rights Act, meaning if they blocked black people from registering to vote. Because, he says, the more Negroes who register as Democrats in the South, the sooner the Negrophobe whites We'll quit the Democrats and become Republicans. That's where the votes are. That's where the votes are. That's the way to get white votes, by counting on white people being afraid of black people. Make clear where the black people are politically and count on what Kevin Phillips calls negrophobia, locking up all the white votes on the other side. It's about making white people feel like they are victims of black people. Black people are the racists. White people need someone to stand up for them. It's good politics. It always has been in this country, and it still is. 
How do you get promoted in a Barack Obama administration? By hating white people. Or even saying you do. Or that they're not good. Or that put them down, whatever. Make white people a new oppressed minority. And they're going right along with it because they're shutting up. They're moving to the back of the bus. They're saying, I can't use that drinking fountain. Okay. I can't use that restroom. Okay. White people, the black people are coming for you. They're coming to take your rights, to take away everything you have. Black people are coming after you. So therefore, white people need to band together. This president, I think, has exposed himself as a guy over and over and over again who has a deep-seated hatred for white people or the white culture. I'm saying he has a problem. He has a... This guy is, I believe, a racist. Fox News Channel this year has run with a few different stories that they that they really pushed all on their own. They weren't mainstream news stories. They weren't even news, really. They were, they were Fox News agenda items, and they all followed a very, very similar narrative. There was the Van Jones controversy. He's a czar, an appointed czar, accountable to no one, usurping legitimate government power, coming to take real government power away. When him being a renewable energy policy expert didn't seem scary enough about Van Jones, Fox News morphed him into an ex-con, a violent ex-con who'd been jailed for racially motivated violence against white people. Here's how Glenn Beck reported it on August 13th, 2009. He said, quote, well, I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad to know that Van Jones, the communist, the radical, the anarchist, the guy you know, part of the Rodney King riots, I'm sure glad that he has the ear of the president. And on August 11th, same guy, quote, here is Van Jones. This is a convicted felon, a guy who spent, I think, six months in prison after the Rodney King beating. He was a black nationalist. He came out an anarchist and a communist. He then found the green movement was the new red. And now he's our green job czar. Why is there so much money from the green movement fund for public interest? Van Jones didn't spend six months in prison for the Rodney King riots. He is not a convicted felon. He has never served time in prison. He's never been convicted of anything. But who cares? The Fox campaign against him worked. And white people, remember, they're coming for you. Violent ex-cons who riot against white people, they're coming for you. The other great Fox News crusade of the past year more black people coming for you. Um, ACORN, an almost all minority community organizing group, torn apart day after day after day on Fox News because Fox News said they were thugs, criminal thugs who were stealing taxpayer money and stealing elections. Now, who brought him into office? The press brought, brought him in. The press was a big factor, and so was, so was they got a lot of help from ACORN, this uh, corrupt organization that uh, is now under indictment in many states throughout the country for voter for fraud and, and uh, registration fraud, and also, by the way, responsible for the stealing of the election of Norm Coleman in Minnesota. Let me ask, then, we keep hearing about this group ACORN. There's, in every single sing, swing state now, there are allegations of voter fraud. You had even said, you used the term stealing the election. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned that that might be happening in this election? I join many Americans in sharing that concern. To expose ACORN, I saw them as a thug organization that was getting my tax dollars. So, Michelle, um, help me out here um, with, um, with, with SCIU having a real seat at the table. These are, this is the thugocracy kind of idea. ACORN. Can you draw the connections between Black Panthers and SCIU? Or are these, these others just kind of latching on because they see what direction the country is headed? You know, there's both implicit and explicit coordination of this corruption, Glenn. Be afraid. They're coming for you. The other great Fox News crusade of the past year uh, was more black people coming for you. That was the new Black Panther Party, uh, basically two whack job guys at a polling station during the election. Uh, the Bush Justice Department investigated whether those two intimidated voters that day and found that they didn't. Uh, so for normal news outlets, this understandably wasn't a story. On Fox, it's reason to play footage over and over and over and over again of a random wingnut black guy being very threatening, being very threatening to white people. 
when you run something like four dozen stories on just one of your Fox News shows, as they did uh, just on this story, four dozen times covering it, each time showing the exact same footage of the exact same threatening random black guy, it's a pretty effective way of getting the message across that random black guys are really threatening. They're coming for you, white people. They're coming for you. Black people are coming for you to take what's yours. And so it goes. And this is a Fox News alert. An Obama administration official resigned just a short time ago after she was caught on tape appearing to tell an audience that she had used her position to racially discriminate against white farmers. No. No, she didn't. She didn't use her position as an Obama administration official to racially discriminate against white people. She really didn't. But it fits the narrative, doesn't it? Beautifully. What do the four major Fox News-only stories of the Obama era have in common? The four major stories pressed and pushed relentlessly on Fox over and above the facts as their own made up the new, make up the news cycle.